Richard Engel. He's, of course, our chief foreign correspondent. And he's making a rare appearance right here in uh, this nation's capital. Richard, well, good to see you. Well, a lot of news going on here, too. <laughs> yes, it is. noticed. <laughs> La last I heard. Okay. We're a big foreign story these days, too, by the way. I, I can imagine. I, I would love to spend an hour with you talking about that. But let's talk about the state of ISIS. Because here we are, there's two simultaneous things that appears going on. Right now, ISIS, when it comes to their caliphate, it appears to be as weak as ever. And, and it's all interrelated, what we're seeing happen in Central Africa. There is we, some strength and weakness, actually. Okay. Um, and then here we are, and yet we seem more vulnerable to an ISIS attack today than ever before. So walk us through the yeah, state so of ISIS. The, so ISIS is very, very weak uh, compared to where it used to be. You know, ISIS used to have a, a kind of rump state. It had its own little caliphate, and it would tell people, come live there, come train for terrorist attacks there. They were paying people. They were trying fledgingly to create a They had own... a tax base. Yes. They had oil revenue. They had a little state. And that little state had the potential and did organize very devastating attacks because if you could go there and train and learn how to kill people and practice firing guns and doing ambush skills, you, you can become very dangerous terrorists. And, and that's what happened. We saw at the Istanbul airport right. attacks. We saw that in the Bataclan uh, theater where commandos who were trained on the ground were deployed right. and, and carried out attacks. They've lost that that space to operate now. So they're changing their, their model. They're just now issuing these, these, uh, these kind of random messages, uh, tweets and, uh, and, and messages over encrypted apps like uh, uh, the Telegram, mm -hmm. telling people to carry out the attacks. And what I was saying is there's a, there's a weakness in strength in that uh, there's, oh, there's a, a strength, strength and weakness, weakness. Yes, yes, yes. because okay. if you have a state, okay, then it's vulnerable to attack. Mm -hmm. If you do attacks that take a lot of planning, mm -hmm. you're building bombs, you're trying to meet together so you can plan things, chances are you're going to get caught. But if you're in telling people to do attacks on their own, use their vehicles, low-level stuff that you can do on your own, it's very hard to to. To, to stop that. So they're changing their, 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 their business model from a, a group that lived in a place, right. spent a lot of time thinking about attacks, to a group that now just sort of blasts out messages on, on your cell phone and says, go you know, carry out an attack. I feel like as a society, we're in a weird conundrum here. And I say as a society, and I'm talking about both the media, government, as we're dealing with. On one hand, we're extraordinarily vulnerable to these small-scale lone wolf one-off attacks than ever before. They're almost impossible to, quote, snuff out. On the other hand, um, and that can be a panic mode, but is there a point that we end up, we overreact? So, I, you know, what is, this seems to be a public policy challenge that we haven't figured out yet. Well, you could look at what happened from ISIS as a, as a success or as a failure. Right. And, and I think it is a little bit of both. Uh, it's a success from their perspective because they hit what is probably the hardest target in the world, New York City, right. an enormously uh, secure city. The NYPD does a fabulous job. They hit that attack. They hit that city. They got lucky. In a very low, t in a got, low rent, in a, low tech way. They got lucky. Yeah. What ISIS is playing now, like I was saying, they're playing the numbers. They are spamming the world. They're sending out messages by the thousands a day saying, go do an attack, go do an attack. And here they got lucky because they found someone who was willing to do it in New York City, a really hard target. So you could look at it from a success from their point of view point of view. You could also look at it as a failure because this is not a major attack. I think there's a danger of, of us overreacting to Eight this people are kind dead. of attack. It's, it, 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 it's hard to say it's not a major attack in the way of it. I mean, that's, the, that's when I say we're, we're in a conundrum, right? Yeah. Well, you, you could also say if they could only carry out an attack with out a weapon, uh, without a firearm, really, and eight people are dead, and if that's the best that they can do, that's not a great, that's not the, the world's worst terrorist organization that's not the, the the sort of the caliphate as it was that's a a very terrible thing a, a terrible tragedy but they got lucky this time uh -huh. because they they spread their messages all, all around the world and somebody picked it up and carried out this attack so from their perspective yeah they 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 hit the number this time but, but it's not ISIS as it wants to be, ISIS the great terrorist organization with a state right. that can carry out complex attacks Considering how we've reacted, considering how the president's reacted, and I say we, the collective we, how much attention this has gotten, is this now inevitable that we'll see probably uh, more of this until we see less of this? Meaning, oh, well, they're going to try to do more of these 
disruptions in major Western cities around the world to see what they can get away with? Well, the, there's always a copycat, uh, mm -hmm. you know, attack. So they're in some using, ways, this is a copycat. This is a, yeah. absolutely yeah. a copycat attack. So they were doing it in Europe, mm -hmm. and they were using vehicles. That's the way that you know ISIS has been doing that for the last you know dozen it or so with attacks, nice. and then yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah. Nice was much bigger scale than right. than this, um, but. You'll see uh, uh, more copycats like this, I would expect, until they come up with a different kind of uh, attack, a different model. Um, this country, every country is uniquely you know, vulnerable. Yeah. This country, and, and what I kept thinking about is, at least he didn't have a high-powered firearm. Right. Because that's the unique challenge in this country, right. is the easy accessibility to uh, high-powered firearms. And I, the people I speak to in, in senior national security uh, yeah. positions are very worried about that. That you're worried about somebody who takes this message, takes ISIS up and, and decides to be a, a lone wolf and also has access to vehicles, trucks, yep. and combine you know, that and with And as we learned in Las fire. Vegas, one person can do a lot. One person can do a lot. Richard Engel, good to see you here. Good to see you. All right. Um, stay safe when you go over. No, but yeah, I would say this one would be an ISIS. They got lucky. They hit they hit the, the, the hard target, but it still shows a pretty weak organization. All right. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.